All right, everyone, welcome back to another video. This was very, very highly requested. We are starting from a blank slate. We are going to be making a song from scratch. So I have a few ideas in my head. This will definitely be better than the last time we did this. Uh, of course, that project never ended up getting finished and I just didn't really like how it turned out. I think I'm a much better producer than what that video entailed. So uh, I'm, I'm gonna record the whole thing from start to finish it'll be multiple episodes i've learned a lot since that last time we did that so i wanted to redo it so i could share more of that stuff so let's get started um you can see here on the left that i actually have been working on a new sample pack so you guys have been huge fans of the first two i got a lot of support and a lot of purchases for the first two so i appreciate those who did buy the first two packs you guys are the best so I have a third one coming for you guys, and we're going to be using some stuff from there to start off this song. I have all of these atmospheres that I made. We'll kind of scan through them. I'm going to find one that I like. This is usually how I start most of my songs is by finding an atmosphere that I like and just kind of working from that. So basically, I'm just going to click through a bunch of them, find one that I think sounds cool, and just go from there. All right. I think I like this awakening one in F sharp major. I feel like this is pretty cool, but you guys know I like to pitch my songs up 50 cents or down 50 cents just because you get that like in between key sound and I really like that. So all right, so I probably should have mentioned what kind of song I'm going to be making. I know I'm making a complexro slash color based track so that house kick tempo but i just don't know if i want it to be 26 28 or 30. 30 is quite quick 26 is quite slow you get a little bit more groove with 26 and then 28 is kind of like that good median that middle point um i think i'm gonna go 26 because we are in a major key and since the song is in major i feel like it would be better if we were at a slower tempo very important as well. I do this with all my tracks. Um, if you open the mixer and you go to the master, I just make sure that the fruity limiter is uh, has all these settings turned off just because we don't want any um, compression on the sound that's being limited and we don't need any of this stuff over here. So we just turn all that off. And then in slot one, I usually add an OTT just for like a mock slash mimic master just so i can hear what the song would sound like if it was mastered and i usually uh these days i used to like jack this all the way up and just turn everything up that's not how i do it anymore i use a lot of the compression features that ott has nowadays so i usually go with like seven percent and i turn everything up and turn this to 60 percent, but then i go in and i tweak this and kind of turn it down and i kind of for electronic music they tend to have like a little bit more flat uh high end and like uh, the mids and lows really punch hard so i kind of do a little shape like that just for now um and then i end up tweaking it later on once we actually start designing stuff so okay now we've gotten ourselves started <laughs> which is good so now we can get into actually making stuff okay so we're gonna work for about an hour and a half today i would say uh, before i edit and upload this video so i don't know how much is going to get done but i do want to at least go over some of the basics of what i make in music so the first things first is my sub basses so i use square waves for my sub basses i know a lot of people use sine waves out there as well you can use either one whatever you want the square wave is a little bit more harsh of a sound than the sine wave um, and of course we are up 50 cents so we have to turn the fine up uh, and then my sub basses, I usually, uh, I make them completely mono, so they don't have any stereo width to them. And then I add that to the mixer and, uh, I will actually go ahead and make this live with you guys. I have a preset channel state that I use for sub basses, which is uh, this right here, but I will just remake this with you guys so you can learn how to do it. So, uh, we'll name this our sub bass for the intro. And I always make my sub bases purple so that I can find them. And uh, the first thing I do is add an OTT and uh, the settings that I, l let me show you what it sounds like actually without anything on it. So just sounds like a square wave. And then what we're gonna do is uh, we're going to take the um, depth here, turn that to 37. And then uh, usually 
I turn the time compression off. I've been experimenting with leaving it on a little bit these days, uh, but I'm going to keep it off for now. Uh, I turn all the highs and mids completely off, so we don't need any of that because this is a sub bass. We just want that low end punch coming through. And so we're going to turn the bass all the way up. And then I usually go to um, about where the L is right here. So in percentages, that is, or in numbers, that is about four and a half decibels. We might tweak that later on. Uh, so that should give you a very large base. You can see, so there's still some stuff that needs to be fine-tuned with that. So I, for distortion, I usually add a fruity wave shaper, and then I just click in a point here, and then very gently just add some more low end here like this. Kind of make like an S shape, if you will. It doesn't need to be that strong. It just needs a little bit of distortion on the low end. So that's pretty wide now. Then we need to EQ this thing. So I have found over my years of making music that sub basses usually, in my opinion, are cut really nicely at around 176 to 178. So I'm going to go like right here. And uh, you can use 72 or 96. Basically what all this does is it changes the slope angle. And so that makes the EQ um, either more harsh or less harsh when it's compared to other instruments. So I used to cut everything at 96. I have realized that is not how EQing works. You need to blend everything in together. Um, but for a very, very deep and harsh sound like this for the sub bass, I usually go with 72 or 96 because we want a quite harsh cutout on the sub bass. Um, so I'm going to leave that as it is so that was 178 that we put that at so now we're really going to have a sub bass now so you can see very very deep and then i like to add a side chain beforehand so that when i do side chain stuff i can just click it right in and so uh this is the secret that i had discovered over the course of the past couple weeks which has changed my music completely which is the sub basses I used to leave the ceiling on like this. Now, the weird thing about Fruity Limiter is the ceiling actually compresses uh, the sound for some reason with this limiter. And so what I do now is I just take the limiter and I jack it all the way up like this. And so that gets rid of the compression on the sound. So the low end of the sub isn't getting compressed at all. So it really, really punches through the mix. And so uh, I usually, um, we'll just drag it down. There's this little line right here. I'll just drag this down to that for now, um, just to kind of sit it there and we'll adjust it later on to where it needs to be. And then uh, my typical side chain kind of starting point goes something like this right here. Uh, it doesn't need to be overly aggressive or anything like that. Probably something like that. And then uh, I will uh, end up, tweaking that later on so uh of course since it's side chained you have to go to our side chain track so let's name this side chain here we'll just make it a weird color and then i right clicked that arrow on the bottom and then you just side chain to this track and now you'll see once we open the limiter again under the compression we can set this to one so now that one is linked to this channel here and that's where we're going to put our ghost kick so uh, that should make a sub bass now. So if we go into here, you can see nice and wide sub bass. So of course we are in the key of F sharp 50. So we have this weird little intro now. I've been recording for 25 minutes already, and we only have this in here. So <laughs> let's get started. That was a little bit of a slow start to uh, this video. I want this song to start with a kick. So I'm going to drag a kick in. Um, I always like to turn the volume up because for whatever reason, when you drag something into the channel rack, it turns the volumes down. Um, but I don't normally place my stuff in the channel rack, to be honest with you, but just for the sake of this, I'm going to do it because this is just an intro kick. It's just something to uh, get the song started. So um, 
I'm going to move the whole song up to bar five because I want this sweep in on the intro. And then once we finish it, we'll move it back to this two right here. But just for the sake of doing math and lining everything up, I'm just going to put it here at the five. So we have this little empty space here. And then I kind of want uh, this kick. Uh, let's rename this. That was supposed to say MIDI, but I'm going to name it to kick. And then we're just going to place that all the way up top here. That was terrible. There we go. That's a little better. And then I'm going to uh, make another channel. I'm going to clone that one. How did I just click on that? There we go. We're going to clone this one and we're going to name this one side chain intro. And then we're going to clone the kick we just made and just do that. And then we're going to add this to the one channel right here. But since this is our intro kick, we don't want it to hit as hard as the drop side chain. So I'm going to turn the volume down and then we can take our one here and go to side chain to this track, which is this is the pad. And then we're going to load up a limiter and load up our side chain preset. So uh, for those wondering what that is, I just turn the ceiling up and these are my compression settings right here. All right. So uh, I just realized I need to turn this down. There we go. Okay, so now we're going to take our side chain and just drag that underneath this, and we should have a nice rotation to the pad now. Now, if you want it to be a little bit, um, how you adjust the side chain with the limiters, if you want it to be a little stronger, you just go to the threshold. The ratio is how strong it is compressing compared to the threshold. And then the threshold is just like how strong it is. So you can have it be really strong if you want. You know, I think it would be cool if we start from four here to nine and have the threshold actually start really really strong like i'm talking this strong and then just have it return to normal so let's find what normal is probably somewhere around right there so we're going to create an automation clip so that's our point now that we want to be at so the value is 26 percent and so then we'll just go down here and we'll just turn this down very aggressively like this. And you're going to see it's going to automate the compression now. Uh, oh, of course, I forgot to do this as well. Take the side chain and uh, make sure you unlink it from the master so that it's not playing any sound. All right, so now we have a nice uh, little intro there. Of course, uh, we want to get some more movement in the song. It sounds very bare, so I'm going to add a riser. This is an eliminate riser from Splice. Very basic, low and soft as it's called. And then I have an ambience chain preset that I usually use. I will make it the first time here with you so you can see what it is. And then for the rest of the series, I'm just going to load up the, uh, the channel state. When I say channel state, by the way, uh, you can go to file and you can go to save mixer track state as, and you can save all of your effects chains and presets so that you don't have to constantly remake stuff over and over again. And so uh, if we go to my file, you can see I have all of these different types of stuff that I use all the time um, so that I don't have to constantly remake them. But I will remake this one just for the sake of you guys. So, um, I'm going to load up a fruity reverb and I'm going to go to the ambience preset. This is a very long and delayed reverb and I just kind of turn it up a little bit and get rid of the low end. And so that's going to make this extend a lot longer, which is fine. And then we're going to go into uh, fab filter. We're going to cut out all the low ends because this is a high end sound. So I'm going to go to like 300 at 30 dB and just kind of like slope this off like this. 
Next, let's add a filter on it. So I'm going to add a low pass filter. Uh, I'm going to go yes on the two times and then just kind of start with this point. Usually I like to listen to my things before I make adjustments like that, but we'll just do that for now. And we will side chain this sound as well. So we'll just do um, a pretty soft side chain. We won't make it that aggressive. And of course, uh, I already know that this sample is in 174 BPM. So in case you missed what I did there, you click on this icon here, you go to fit to tempo and then type in BPM and then type in the BPM of the sample. So I know this one is in 174 and it should match it to the project. Now, very important when you stretch a sample like this, if the uh, mode is set to resample like this, it will change the pitch. So you want to set it to auto and then go to pitch and go to reset. And now it'll maintain its original pitch. All right, so that's a nice little intro there. So most songs would have some sort of a pluck or something. I'm gonna add, um, I'm gonna start this differently than what I normally do. Kind of like that one, just something very, very light in the background, doesn't need to be overly aggressive or anything. And then I'm gonna add the ambient chain on it as well, but turn the volume down. just kind of like a nice little accent now um think about bass notes and chords what are we going to do for that so i think i'm going to find some inspiration i'm just going to go through my sample library and find something that kind of piques my interest and go from there all right i found these eccentric glitch bells uh they're pretty cool but i want to slow them down and chop them up and kind of make them into my own thing so um, I'm going to add them to the mixer first. So that is channel 10. So make sure they're set to the same thing. And then let's go, let's see here. So this is in D minor. So we got to match this to the song. All right. That's a pretty good start. Let's kind of, uh, let this, um, filter in a little smoother. It's kind of like coming in out of nowhere, which I don't really want. So uh, I am going to add some volume automation to it. So just right click on the volume knob, create automation clip. And I don't want it to start from zero, but just want it to be a little quiet. And then we're going to take the filter that we put on it and start that quite low as well. And then just have it increase all the way up to here. All right, now we've got ourselves a little bit of an intro. Again, I just want to go through my samples and just kind of find some cool stuff and see what talks to me. And that's kind of usually how I get my song started. I really like these. These are nice, nice little shimmers off the start here from Fazius. I think this is from the Exobolt pack. So I'd like to add a few of these. I feel like this is really nicely complementing the track. I would like to actually just kind of um, have this be a little bit more low end cut and filtered through, but I think this is going to sit very, very nicely, uh, and mix in well with everything here. So I'm not going to filter it that much cause it's, it, it already has plenty of high end. I just wanted this to have a little bit more ambiance. Okay. So this is what we have so far. All right, so we have something to work with now, which is nice. So I do want to make the chords next. Um, so I'm just going to kind of find a few more samples that I'd like to add, stuff that makes it sound a little bit more nice, and then we'll add the chords. 
All right, so I think uh, the chords is the last thing we're going to do for this video. And the chords in the intro are just going to be like, um, I have this sample here. I'm not going to use the sample, but I just want the same MIDI from the sample. So this is what it sounds like. So, so we're going to we're going to do that same progression, but we're going to make it better here. So I think uh, let me just draw it in. All right, we have our chords in there. I had to do a little bit of uh, some tweaking around. I actually removed the original pad that we had because uh, it just was not in the right key. So I don't know what happened to that sample, but it's uh, completely uh, mislabeled. So I replaced it with this uh, different one that I made, um, which should sit nicely. And now we have now we have these chords as well. So what I wanted to do uh, with this was make a variation for the second one. So we start off with this note, then we go to and then I wanted it to sit on the G sharp here. So get rid of this C. And I think that should work really nicely here. Of course, let's add this to the mixer and I'm going to OTT this. Give it a little bit of some low end cut. See where that brings us. All right, that's a pretty nice intro. Uh, now, let's get some hi-hats going in there. Let's make it sound a little bit more interesting. Uh, of course, I want to add a small sub bass in this part. So I'm just going to copy our second octave notes here. And let's see, I don't even think we placed that sub bass we made. We didn't. So uh, we can just go in here and just delete whatever this is and just place this right in there. And now we can add that underneath our chord. All right, I'm going to copy this chord and we're going to make a detuned version of it as well. So let's just clone this and then go in here. Uh, let's make it its own channel. Actually, we'll call it detune chord like this. So let's load it up. So we have this. Uh, of course, we don't want it to be um, filtered in the same way. So we're going to add it to its own channel and I'm going to load my detune chord reset thing, which is basically what I just did over here. It's the same exact thing, except with some delay on it. Uh, and then we want oscillator B. I'm going to turn this to 50 and then uh, very important. So 50 is our base point, but I'm going to go down three on this side. Actually, let's go down four. We'll go down four on this side and I'm going to go up four on this side. And that's going to give it a different type of detune feel. <laughs> And then we're going to actually detune it with this. So we want 16 voices each side. And then I think I'm going to go maybe like, um, I don't know. We'll, we'll do like a little bit this side and then a lot on this side and turn this side down. Maybe that's a little bit too much for that side. I think that's a good, sorry, that was really loud. So I think this is a good part to start from 
And then what we can do is we'll filter this and we don't want much low end on this at all, just because this is being used for the intro. We're not actually using this for the drop or anything. So let's just kind of filter that in. So we'll add it uh, right here. And then I want to vo volumate. I want to automate the volume of this. So we'll create an automation clip and we'll put this in like this down here. Let's start it really, really low here on the low pass filter. All right, so now that should be nice and subtle. And I forgot for the detune saw, we actually need to make an adjustment, which is turn on the oscillator side here. And this needs to go to 50. And uh, we need to go 16 voices on the left side. And this needs to be turned down to like six. And we can just leave this one here. And you're gonna see this now changes the sound to be a little bit more wide. All right, I have some sharks samples in here of like these water brush things and I just want to pitch them up to the key of the song and add them in the background. E, F, and 50. So we pitch this down, three. All right, so I just wanted that one to be on the second part over here because <laughs> I feel like this is a really, really cool sound. We'll just repeat it twice. I feel like that's good enough, and we don't want it to be that loud. Um, and so we can kind of just put these other water sounds in at random points, I think. Maybe like one right here in the intro, and then another one over here, and then the longer one can probably go over here or something. And then we can just put the rest... Uh, the rest can just kind of go like this. And we want to make sure that we sidechain this as well. So that was 18. And uh, let's just add that in there. Whoops, that's the wrong thing. There we go. Okay, just put that in there. And uh, that should be a pretty decent intro to work from. I think we should be able to get quite a bit done there. We need a melody to end this off here, just so we have somewhat of an idea of what to do. <laughs> what if we reuse the vocal that we made from the first <laughs> the first series? Because I like that one. I actually it worked really nice, but I think if we slow it down, it might actually fit. I think it works. Let's keep it. <laughs> I think it works just fine. We'll add a vocal chain on this here and I'm going to filter it down low and side chain it because this is just the intro. So we don't want it to play yet, um, but we will make this work. And I already know what the drop is going to sound like for this song. That's why I started this series was because I actually have an idea this time. Um, so we just need to figure out how to make that work in the next episode. But I think we're just about done for today. I want to hear it one more time though. I'm just going to add a few more reversers and sweeps in here to like blend this in a little bit better. All right, I'm going to do one more thing today, which is add a piano with some rhythm to it. I'm going to use FL keys because it has that really electronic sound. So we'll just name this keys and um, 
we'll just use this one we already loaded up here. And so I'm just going to increase the hardness of it a little bit, turn the release down and paste those chords in there. So we got these. And so what I will do is I'm going to chop these up using the chop feature. So alt U we'll have this and we'll have it play every beat. So like this, and then I'm going to shorten them just a little bit by holding down alt and left click. So like this. And then on every last thing here, like right here and right here, I want to add like little fill notes. All right. So I came up with this nice little melody thing to sit in between. I learned this from Japanese music actually. And when they do their MIDI for the songs, they actually have like these cool little transitions where they place a really short note and then the actual note that they want right above it um, in kind of like a fifth scale. And uh, you get this really cool kind of sweep like this. That da, 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 da. And so uh, I'm just going to add that underneath now. And we are going to make this piano quite sharp. can't really hear it. I feel like I need to make it louder. <laughs> Maybe a little less low end so it'll punch a little more. Now the drop is of course going to be much louder than this. So if it sounds a little flat, it's kind of intentionally done that way. So I don't have the sub that loud. I don't have the kick that loud and I don't have the side chain that loud. So when we make the drop, it's going to sound much wider and much more complete because we're going to do those certain sounds louder for the intro. We don't really want that. So um, I think this is a pretty good start so far. Now I'm thinking, what if we cut the vocal up and just delay it so that you don't kind of like a little teaser for the vocal instead of just playing the, the whole loop that we made, let's just like tease in a little bit of parts like this. And what we'll do is uh, we have actually, we already made the automation clip for it. So right. Uh, let's kind of choose this point here. All right, that should be a little bit easier to understand now. Those two blues are according to this uh, sample right here. So um, every time that the vocal ends, I'm going to take the reverb and delay and turn it up quite a bit so that it extends all the way through here. And then right as it's about to start again, we'll take it back and copy those value points just like this right here. Nice and simple. And so that way the reverb will extend. I'm actually going to kind of bleed it in a little bit now that I think about it, kind of like this, uh, like that right there, um, just so that it flows smoothly. All right, now we should have a nice little vocal there that it's got some nice reverb to it. Let's see how it sounds. All right, I just got an idea for the piano to kind of make this uh, work a little bit better is let's just turn it down 
at the start and then we'll have it in full force for the second bar so let's get that piano and so we'll start the volume of it down here and uh, just so that it transitions in smoothly um, and it's not so harsh at the start and then that way we can really play it loud through the second part of the verse you notice how i'm leaving a lot of high end or excuse me uh, i'm leaving a lot of low end in the piano as well just so that it, it's got more wideness to it all right let's play it from the top and then we'll end the video there i think we made a lot of good progress today All right, I think that's a good place to end it. I'm really happy with that. I think uh, next episode we will do the buildup and the drop. That should get us to um, a few hours worth of footage. So I hope you guys enjoyed that. Please be sure to like and subscribe the video, of course, as every other YouTuber says. <laughs> it just really helps us out, okay? That's all That's all there is to it. Anyways, um, yeah, if you guys enjoyed the video, please be sure to leave a like so that I know to continue this series. Anyways, uh, that's going to be it for today. Thank you guys so much. Uh, my Spotify link is in the description if you're interested in listening to some of my other stuff. And I'll see you guys in the next one. See you later.